Hey guys, Jeff with West Guy Designs. So we just finished up this Tundra and uh, I was talking to a customer yesterday and he had said, hey, uh, my truck rides a little rough. His is a TRD off-road. He said it rides a little rough. So one of the first questions I asked him is, how does it sit from front to back? When you take the measurement on it, how does it sit from front to back? We always like to talk to customers and people when they're gonna take measurements from their truck and we talk about it in other videos, is that you take the measurement from the center of the axle to the bottom edge of the wheel well and you do it both in the front and the back. If you're trying to find out where you're at before you start and where possibly you're gonna go to or what you're looking to go to. One of the things people say, well, why don't you measure from the ground? And why don't you measure from the top of the tire? Well, if I don't change the tires or I change the tires and I take the measurement from here to here, this tire is now taller, so the gap is now smaller. So it's kind of not a really good measurement to use. So from the center of the axle to the bottom edge of the wheel well works good every single time, whether you've swapped tires, you haven't swapped tires, you want to get your measurements before you swap your tires, it always is going to come in the same measurement. We designed this kit to be a quarter inch higher in the back. So if I've got somebody that tells me my truck is three quarters of an inch higher in the front than it is in the rear, most likely the truck not riding correctly, riding rough is because it, it now is trying to pull the wheels back up underneath the truck. As it drives forward, it's, it's literally trying to pull them underneath the car. So when you go over a bump and it goes over a bump and it actually lifts up the front of the truck, it actually is trying to even continue to pull the wheels back even more so underneath the truck. So it doesn't allow when it comes down, it doesn't allow the suspension to relax. It, it's very stiff. And so when people go over the bump, it's actually preloading the suspension even more when you're, the tires are pulling themselves underneath the truck as it propels itself forward. So as you go up over the bump, it's trying to bunch itself up like this because the suspension's not really relaxed. So what happens is, is you get the alignment done where the tires go straight down the road. And when it goes over the bump, it allows the suspension to work the way it's supposed to. So. The suspension, if it's set up correctly, the alignment set up properly, we're 24 here and we're 24 and a quarter back there. I've got some specs right here. This is what the numbers should look like on the vehicle, not what Toyota says they should look like, not what the Toyota spec alignment should look like. This is our alignment specs. So actual, where we see everybody go wrong is on the camber setting. They're all way too high. On the camber setting, you never want it to go more than 0 0.4. 0 0.3 right there, 0.2 is perfect, that 0.3 is great. 0.4 is just kind of the borderline and anything over that, we just had a guy yesterday, he was at 1.0. 1, 1 uh, that gives me an indicator that now that the tires are trying to pull themselves back underneath the truck, that's why it's riding, one of the reasons why it'd be riding stiff. The other place is, is a lot of the shops, they'll put too much tow in and they put too much tow in it so they know that the car will drive straight down the road so they don't have to get it back on the alignment rack. A lot of times when we're aligning these trucks, We'll do an alignment on the truck. We back the truck up, we'll maybe pull it forward again. It's because the pads that they're sitting on, we're not able to get the final adjustments on it because it's already excelled. It's already pushed itself out as far as it can. So you back it up, you pull it back on the pads and you do a check again. Or in a lot of cases, our alignment tech, that's what he specializes in. He'll take the car around the block, drive it, see how it drives. Then he'll bring it right back in. He'll put it back on the alignment machine. He'll check it again. The numbers are never gonna be just the same as they just were because the suspension did relax itself a little bit. He'll put it back on and then he'll do a final touch up on it to just dial it in the way we want it dialed in. It is in some ways rocket science and in some ways it's not, but there's guys that are doing, we sell like 3000 these lift kits every single month out of our shop. We build them at our shop, we ship them out of our shop, we do about 150 to 180 trucks a month. We typically do about 100 tundras out of the shop that we outfit. I can't tell you that we build 2,990 of them one way and 10 of them for the people that are having problems out there a different way. They're all built the exact same way. They're all done on a CNC. They're all done in a climate controlled environment. So all the tolerances are always the same every single time within a, within a thousands. So one guy tells you the truck drives amazing and another guy tells you the truck doesn't ride correctly. It's not because we made this guy's kit any different than we made this guy's kit. It's just that this guy's kit was in, installed correctly and it was aligned correctly and it's done to the specifications that we asked. Not close to the specifications that we asked, not I got it as close as I could to the specifications that Wes got asked, but we got it exactly where Wes got asked. And if you get it exactly where Wes got asked, 
down to the down to the points and on that settings then you won't have any problems this truck drives amazing i just drove it myself and it does it drives great and the cars that leave our shop when they leave our shop we don't get people to leave our shop and say hey my truck doesn't ride good every single time they ride correctly and they ride cor correctly because we do what we do best and set them up, up accordingly to what our our westcott specifications are so it's not someone else's and not someone saying oh well, i can't get them there or i can't only get them close if someone says they got them close or they couldn't get them there you're at the wrong place getting your alignment done you need to take your car to a place that can specialize in doing what you ask them to do and knowing where the specifications are that we ask those to be set up at so don't blame the kit blame the installer or blame the alignment person so i'm going to continue walking around this truck and show you a little bit more things that we did to this truck this has a true 37 on it so some additional things have to be done uh, if you don't want any rubbing on this truck. We did do a body mount chop here in the back. We did that here in the house. Uh, we also pinned back the fender liner. We don't agree with cutting them out. We want them to look like they're as factory as possible. So we've done that. Up in the front here, because this True 37 to clear here, we actually cut the uh, bottom part of the fender liner out in the front here. And then we actually have to trim the retractable air dam here on the corners on that. So we, uh, we cut out that just a little bit so it clears the uh, feathering or the edge of the tire right here on that. We've got something else I'm gonna show you right here. A lot of the liners that we're seeing on the newer trucks that are coming in, the 23s, are running really close to the tires. So what I like tend to do is I like to reach in here right where I know it fastens in, where the, the grommets are, the plastics are, and I like to just push on it a little bit. And it's a metal bracket. And so I flex that away from there. It's just clearing the tire right here in the back, you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach on the fender here and I'm gonna flex that away uh, from the tire as well. But you can flex it, you can bend it. So now you can see how the, the liner is far away from the tire. As the tire grows, as it speeds up, you're not gonna have to worry about it rubbing a hole through the liner on the, on the truck. This truck came out really nice. Just a really clean look. It's got a mess, uh, set of Method 305s in it. It's uh, done in an 18 by nine with a plus 18 offset. And we'll share with you kind of how you can see outside the fender. It is, it's got a really nice stance to it. Very popular wheel, works very well. These Nitto uh, Ridge Grapplers, they work really well as well. And if you look at them, they look aggressive from the sidewall, but it's got more of a hybrid tread in the tire. So we just wanted to share some of this stuff with you because I do, I see people on social media and one guy says this and another guy says that. And you know, obviously I want everybody to be happy. I can't make everybody happy, but I want people to understand that, hey, I will do my best to make you happy. And I will do my best to make sure that your car rides correctly. Um, I put my phone number out there all the time. I'll attach it to this video as well. My cell phone number will be on there. My personal number as the owner, I will put my phone number on there. So if you have any issues or problems, you can reach out to me directly or the shop possibly that you're working with. You want them to reach out to me? I'm more than happy to talk to them as well. I'm always available or I will always make myself available to help anybody and in all their needs. I get a lot of guys that say, oh, you know, you're preloading the spring. You're preloading a spring and a coilover. When you adjust the dial on the coilover, you are preloading the spring. We're doing the exact same technology using the exact same principles. We just do not make it adjustable. We have set the preload in the collar doing the exact same thing a coilover does. So if someone tells you different, that's not the person you wanna be talking to because it is designed and the technology is the exact same. We're just not making it adjustable. So again, thank you guys for watching. Please reach out with any questions. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.